Hello, I'm Ros Aitchison from the external funding team at East Riding of Yorkshire Council. The council's just acquired a new funding search tool called East Riding for Community and I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. The idea of East Riding for Community is that we hope it will encourage a greater take-up of funding opportunities in the East Riding area. Essentially, East Riding for Community is a funding advice portal and it's a one-stop shop for community funding information. You've got the web address there, www.openforcommunity.info slash East Riding and we hope you're going to enjoy using it. There are lots of benefits, we think, about East Riding for Community compared to the current funding search tool that we've been using for voluntary and community groups up to now. That's called GrantNet and some of you will be familiar with that. What you've got with East Riding for Community, um, like GrantNet, it allows you to search through hundreds of funding opportunities that we hope will be useful to you and your group and your projects. Um, and it also supplies you with 24-7 access to a dedicated online funding search tool. So, we'll get started um, and look at the home page. And at this point, um, I just draw to your attention that we have provided uh, a mini user guide for people to get started with East Riding for Community. And you'll recognise it because the home page is on the front. We think it's quite an inviting home page. Um, and I just want to say a few things about it. There are various tabs towards the top of the page um, and they cover things like your uh, favourites tab, um, a search tab, some browsing tabs and a tab towards the right hand side to do with local support which will give you far more local support information than we've been able to achieve up to now with GrantNet. Over on the right hand side you've got an up-to-date listing of funding news, which we hope is going to be of interest to you. Um, and just to say a couple of other things about this page, you'll see under the East Riding logo the words business and community. At the moment we're on the community funding advice portal, but you can equally toggle over to business and find the same kind of information about grants, and loans and award schemes for small businesses. So we hope you'll find that useful as well. You'll see next to the East Riding logo, the Data Observatory logo. The Data Observatory is a team of statisticians working within County Hall and compiling all kinds of useful information about population, deprivation, and all kinds of things like that. Now, you'll know if you've ever had to do a funding application that you're probably at some stage going to need some of this background information about population, etc. So you can click onto the Data Observatory button there and get access to all of that information straight away. So we hope you think that that's going to be a useful feature for you. As soon as you start trying to use East Riding for Community, you'll find that a registration page pops up. We've tried to make this as simple as possible um, and you only have to answer four or five questions and they are things like your name, the name of your organisation, your postcode and your email address. And once you've done that, <coughs> you can get started straight away. Incidentally, if you do use the East Riding for Business, you'll be asked more questions. Um, but certainly, as far as the information for voluntary and community groups is concerned, the registration is as simple as we can make it. So, what happens after you've registered? Then you can start searching for funding. Um, and you can do it in a variety of ways, you can search by type of funding, for example, government funding, 
national lottery funding or charitable trust funding. Um, and I will say a little bit more about that in a moment. But the idea is to make your funding search as easy as possible. So, let's have a look at what happens if you conduct a funding search. And when you do this, um, then you're asked just four questions. Um, so again, it's very simple. Um, and the kind of questions are, okay, what kind of area are you operating in and do you want funding for? Is it for an environmental project? Is it something to do with families or children? Generally, what's the focus of the project? The second question is, what kind of organisation are you? Because funders' eligibility criteria will often distinguish between groups that are registered as charities and other voluntary and community groups or town and parish councils, for example. The third question is, how long has your organisation been operating? Has it just been set up, for example, or has it been going for a number of years? And the final question is, well, if you did get this money and you were successful, what would you use the funding for? Are you going to use it for advice and support? Are you going to use it for transport? Are you going to use it to put on events? In each case, there's a drop-down box, um, and again, that makes it nice and simple for you. Just to say, while we're talking about searches, that if you don't want to do a search by answering the four questions, you can also do um, a keyword search, and that's just another way of getting to funding information. This idea of a keyword search we think is good when you can remember the name of a particular funding scheme, such as Awards for All, for example. If you were to just type Awards for All into the keyword box, that would bring up all the information that you need on that. We'd suggest, though, that you either do the keyword search or you do the search using the four questions and not both. Because if you do both, you can sometimes find that it will restrict all the funding opportunities that are available to you. Okay, so what happens when you conduct your search, you press the search button, which is a good bit, and you think, well, what are the results going to show? This is the kind of page that you'll get up showing the funding results and they'll list all the schemes for you with a very brief statement about each scheme. You'll see that um, against each scheme, towards the right hand side, there's a blue bar and that's a best match bar. And basically, the more blue there is in that bar, then the better fit that funding scheme will be to your project. If, when you're looking at the list of schemes, you're not quite sure, there's not enough information in the one or two sentences giving you an overview, if you hover over the title of the scheme, then that will bring up an extended set of details. Um, it will include a better and longer description of the funding scheme, key eligibility criteria, and over on the right-hand side of the page, lots of useful links and documents, for example, application forms that you can download, guidance on a particular scheme that you can download. So that's very useful. But whatever you do in terms of searching, um, we think that East Riding for Community is useful because it has these additional features. Once you've done a search, however you've done it, you can save that search, you can save selected schemes, and you can produce a report. And I'll say a little bit more about reports in a moment. I just want to go to the fourth bullet point there about viewing results, because this is 
quite useful, I think. In the bottom right-hand side of the page, you can click on various buttons to view your results in different ways. You can do it alphabetically, you can do it as it's done here, where local schemes are listed first, and then the list broadens out into national funding schemes. But I'd just like to take this opportunity to pass on a little tip. The very last possibility that you've got on that list, view results by, says status. And if you click that, I think that's a really useful button to get to know, because that will list all schemes that are open for applications first, followed by all the closed schemes. And I don't know about you, but I prefer to be spending my time looking at schemes that are open for applications and not those that have passed their closing date. If you don't have a particular project in mind, you can browse for funding opportunities um, in those three areas that I mentioned earlier, by government funding, by lottery funding, or by trust funding. And as you go into each area, it will say, um, well, okay, you're interested in, for example, lottery funding, or you're interested in lottery funding for a community project or a heritage project. And if you just let the scheme guide you, um, then I think you'll find that there's a lot of useful information that you can get by this method. But whether you've searched or whether you've browsed, um, eventually um, you'll come up with um, the opportunity to either save a whole search or save selected schemes from within that search. Um, and the second bullet point there is useful to know. You can set up tailored email alerts so that two or three months down the line you can suddenly find an email popping into your inbox to say, well, that scheme that you're interested in, here's another funding scheme that's similar and you might be interested in that too. So it says there you never miss out on a funding opportunity and I think that's right. I said a little bit about reports. You can produce tailored reports, um, and this is something that, that people that have been used to using GrantNet have often said to us that when they switch their computer off, they lose all the information. Um, but now you're able to produce a report that you can look at afterwards. And when you produce that report, um, you can put on um, your name, the title of the report, and who it's for. The reports open in a word format. They give all the scheme details at a glance. And then this is the best bit, they can be saved, you can print them, you can email them to people in your group. Um, and everybody then will have the opportunity to look through the schemes that you've selected. Another really good benefit of East Riding for Community is the local support section, which, as it says, provides information on funding available in the East Riding area. Not just funding, though, you can also view local advice and fact sheets, you can get information on local support organisations and you can also get a list of local events. So, I think the message that we want to get across is we think that East Riding for Community will make life easier for you, for your group and its projects, so please try it Use the mini guide if you need to. If you get stuck, do contact the external funding team. Our details are there, our email and our telephone number. Um, I'm happy to respond to any inquiries, um, and my colleagues will too. That's Sarah and Joanne. We hope you'll have fun using East Riding for Community. 
and let us know what you think. Thank you.